and welcome to Ramallah. Welcome to this France 24 interview. Our guest today is the Palestinian Prime Minister, Mohamed Shtaye. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Mr. Prime Minister, the Trump administration just announced that it would hold an economic conference for the Palestinians in late June in Bahrain. You were not consulted, and obviously, for you, it's a no-go. Well, it's not only that. It's really very ironic that uh, the administration is putting all economic pressures and declaring a financial war on the Palestinian Authority and uh, organizing a workshop to speak about investments in Palestine and supporting the Palestinian people. It's very ironic on one hand. On the very other hypocritical, hand, you would say? It's very hypocritical. It's very hypocritical, but it's not only that. <laughs> More than this is... In the case of Palestine, the struggle really is not economic struggle. The struggle is political. And therefore, the Palestinian economic crisis has to do with the Israeli measures against the Palestinian people, against the Palestinian economy. So why not go? Why not go? Because this is part of a comprehensive deal. We don't speak about a an economic situation in the absence of a political frame. The Palestinian people are the ones who have been living here for quite some time, and they have explicitly said it is not with bread ones live only. Palestinians are concerned about bread, but the issue is not only bread. The issue is that Palestinians are looking for dignity, freedom, end of occupation, independent Palestinian state, and so on. This workshop, we have seen this exercise so many times. Secretary John Kerry announced at the Dead Sea to assess the Palestinian economy with $4 billion, it never materialized. The previous administration, they have brought an American company called McKinsey. They conducted a lot of studies about the Palestinian economy. They put some suggestions. It never materialized. And the Americans are counting, about, counting on, so many, uh, on so much money from the Arab countries. And the Arab countries, we deal with them directly. We don't need really a third party to intermediate between Arab assistance and Palestine. So therefore, this workshop, we were not consulted. We were not part of it. And we think that this is part of a deal that is not clear yet. If, you, if the Americans are going to really deal with the situation, they have to be explicit about it. They have to be transparent about it. And then economics is a product of a political frame rather than the opposite. Right. But that being said, Bahrain is hosting that conference. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates have already announced that they would attend. So they're not saying we're waiting for the political deal. They're going already. Is this a betrayal of the Palestinian cause? Well, look, I mean, our Arab brothers, they stand solid on the issue of the political situation, on, the, on their political statements. Well, that's not the signal they're sending by going. By go I think Arab countries are independent. They are free to do whatever they want. And the message that we get from them is that they are standing solid with us on the political frame. But it's they disappointing. Are well, they are saying that, you know, we want a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. They are saying that we are for all the Palestinian rights. We are saying that we accept all what the Palestinians accept and we, they reject what the Palestinians reject. So we understand the pressure that some Arab countries are under. And therefore, without us being there, the exercise is useless. But uh, that being said, don't you think that Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, care more about Iran than they care about the Palestinians? No. More and more overtly. No. We know that uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, they have a concern about the Iranian issue. And they forget we, the Palestinians. No they, no, they don't. No, they didn't. The Saudis are standing solid. Kuwait is standing solid with us. United Arab Emirates, they issued a statement to say they are, they are in full support with the Palestinian legitimate rights and so on. This has not come at the expense of Palestine. The Iranians are doing something. The Arabs are not happy about it. Officially, we are with the Arabs, whether they are against the Iranians or against whoever. There is an Arab solidarity on this exercise, and I think that the Saudis, as I told you, the Saudis and all Arabs are in full support with the Palestinian legitimate rights. But this means, as the Trump administration has said and repeated even the last few days, that there will be a political component of this deal. You've already said it's a non-starter. 
Why not? Maybe it's a good plan. You haven't seen it. You're not talking to the Americans unless you are. You're right. We haven't seen it. But we actually saw what is worse than the text. What is worse than the text is what the United States have done. United States has declared a financial war on the Palestinian Authority on UNRWA, which is a humanitarian organization dealing with the Palestinian refugees. United States has moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, declaring that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people. United States has also considered Jerusalem to be off the negotiating table. The refugees is off the negotiating table. So the American measures are actually sabotaging all the final status issues which we have agreed with the Israelis. So therefore, when we say we oppose, we oppose the things that has been taken or said. There is an economic component, there is a political component. We haven't seen the political component, it's true. But for us, we have seen the worst than the political component, which is the measures on the ground. Right. Uh, so basically, initially, President Mahmoud Abbas was quite enthusiastic about Donald Trump. They had conversations, and I was told by some of his advisors that he was quite optimistic. Do you think that Trump essentially did not speak the truth to President Abbas when he promised him that he would clinch the ultimate deal? Our president has met with President Trump four times. <clears throat> the first was in Washington, the second was in Bethlehem, the third was in New York, the fourth was in Riyadh. And the conversation was going very well. And our president explained to him, really, that, you know, the solution here is either we go into one state reality, which, in, which means that Israel will be an apartheid state, or we go to a two-state solution, which does enjoy an international consensus. Unfortunately, we have not heard, we have not heard anything positive in the issue of two states. We have not heard anything positive about the borders of 1967. We have not heard anything positive about Jerusalem. We have not heard anything positive about the issue of refugees. And therefore, the exercise or the talks between our president and President Trump, it actually led to something that is totally unpleasant to us. For us, as I told you, the talks were going well. The outcome was a disaster. What's going to be the Palestinian re response? There have been discussions of a few very concrete measures. I want to have a very clear answer for you. Would there be a possibility for the Palestinians to withdraw their recognition of Israel? Yes or no? We're considering that. Seriously? Seriously. Cut off security cooperation between the Palestinian Authority and Israel? The Palestinian uh, Central Council, Palestinian National Council, have taken resolutions yes. uh, which calls for uh, redrawing the relationship between us and Israel. This means that the re our relationship with Israel is dictated into four angles, economic, political, security, and legal. Political track is closed. The security track is now seriously considered to be reviewed fully and totally. And the to issue... To severed, there could be... We are, we are looking at this seriously. The issue of recognition, we have recognized Israel. Israel only recognized the BLO as a legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, but it never recognized Palestine as a state on the borders of 67, which means that the recognition is not mutual. And the, the fourth issue has to do with the economic relationship. The Palestinian-Israeli relationship with the economic track is actually one way, one way. Palestinians have no access to means of production. Palestinians have no access to their natural resources. Palestinians have no access to 62% of the West Bank. Palestinians have no access to the entry points, to the exit points. Our money that is collected by Israel, which is our money, is now under Israeli measures, and every now and then the Israelis either they freeze it or they cut it and so on, in total violation of the Paris Protocol. When, what I mean to say here is that every single agreement that has been signed between us and Israel, Oslo, Oslo II, wherever, Hebron Agreement, all the agreements, Paris Protocol Agreement, are actually sabotaged, violated by Israel. So we will not continue to respect the agreements as long as Israel is not respecting the agreements. Could you abandon a two-state solution and advocate a one-state solution? Yes or no? 
Well, the issue is not a one state versus two states. There is an international consensus about two states. There is an Arab consensus about two states. There is a Palestinian consensus about two states. Now, we are saying, if Israel does not want a two-state solution, then tell us what you want. The thing that we will never accept is to maintain the status quo. The debate in Israel today is between those, not between those who want peace and those who want a continuation of occupation. The debate in Israel today is between those who want to annex certain areas of the West Bank and those who want to maintain the status quo. These two things are not acceptable to us and we will resist it. So it's the end of the two-state solution, given the Israeli political situation, or very I, close to that. I don't say that. I think every fact, every fait accompli that has been established by Israel on the ground is reversible. And therefore, and therefore, the issue of two states is still on the table. It is doable if there is a political will on the side of Israel. I agree with you that the facts on the ground and the Israeli policy is designed to fully and totally erode the possibility of a Palestinian state. And, as Netanyahu said, he will never allow the unity between West Bank and Gaza. Do you still trust him as a potential partner? Netanyahu? Mm -hmm. Never. Never. Netanyahu has never been a partner. Netanyahu, our president, Mahmoud Abbas, has spent with Netanyahu 12 hours of discussion in, in Washington, D.C., at the State Department, in Sharm el-Sheikh, and it, at his house in West Jerusalem. Netanyahu never, never showed any interest in peace. Netanyahu, all what he, he was lecturing about security and security and security. Netanyahu never, if you ask an Israeli, tell the Israelis, where are the borders of Israel? They will not tell you. Ask Netanyahu, where are the borders of Israel? He will not tell you. Ask Netanyahu, what is his political vision for ending the conflict? He will not tell you. The Israelis, they think they are living in the golden age of the state of Israel. And that is not sustainable. Are you disappointed that Europe is not more outspoken in support of a Palestinian state? No, Europe is very outspoken when it comes to uh, a Palestinian state. The problem is that Europe is not really putting its economic weight behind its political statement. The issue for us is we hope more from Europe. Europe European position is very clear. They are for two states on the borders of 67 with Jerusalem as a capital. The problem is with Europe is that this statement, which is good in line with our, with our goals, the Europeans are not putting their economic weight, their heavy weight, to make this possible. I will tell you one important thing. Netanyahu now is threatening to annex certain parts of the West Bank. I think it is time for Europe, France in particular, yes, to, to recognize Palestine as a state as a preventive measure not to allow Netanyahu to take any unilateral measure vis-a-vis -vis territory and so on and so forth. I want to get quickly uh, to the issue of Palestinian reconciliation. Obviously, uh, the situation with Hamas is still very tense. There have been a number of agreements. They have never been implemented. You're a member of Fatah. Obviously, many are questioning whether you will be able to pull off what hasn't happened for the past decade, reconciliation with Hamas. Are you considering reaching out to Hamas and finally achieving that reconciliation? For sure. Look, my dear friend, I will tell you, I'm ready to go to Gaza tomorrow. Really? If Hamas is ready for the implementation of October 12, 2017 agreement, which is the last agreement that has been signed with them, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go tomorrow to Gaza. Are they ready to do this, do you think? We have been trying to convince them to do that. Unfortunately, it is not working. We count upon the Egyptian efforts into this direction. Our model for reconciliation is based on one authority, one policeman, one law, one judicial system, one legitimacy. They won't accept that. They don't accept that. Their model of reconciliation is based on division of labor. You take underground, we take above ground. You bring the money, we spend the money. You're the government, but we are the ruling party. This is not acceptable to us. Now, we came with a solution. If our model for reconciliation is not acceptable to Hamas and their model is not acceptable to us, then let's go to the people. Let the Palestinian people decide. And that is why elections. our president called for elections. 
In order for elections to materialize, you need two agreements. One with Hamas, which is not there yet, and the other with Israel to allow us to conduct elections in East Jerusalem, which is not there yet. So therefore, we are pushing, seriously pushing. Why? Because today, the only legitimacy that Palestinian people enjoy is the legitimacy of the president of the Palestinian Authority and the legitimacy of the chairman of the PLO, which is Abu Mazen. And therefore, we need this sort of back to track when it comes to democracy and bring the Palestinian legislative structure into being. Have you been in touch with the Hamas leadership to achieve that? Since Through the Egyptian intermediators, yes. Right, just very last uh, question. Uh, is it mission impossible to be the prime minister of Palestine at this stage, political situation with Israel, with the US in a very bad position, nearing maybe economic collapse, would you say? It's not mission impossible, it's mission difficult. And very difficult. And maybe it is very difficult. I don't think that we will stay long for this in this bottleneck. At the end of the day, Israelis maybe, they don't want this authority to collapse. They, are, they want to squeeze it. They want to lower the political ceiling. They don't want this authority to become a state. We know that. But from our side, we will do everything possible. One, to relieve our people, improve their lives. But this Palestinian authority is a component of the national paradigm, of the national project, which is on the road of ending occupation, establishing a Palestinian independent sovereign state on the borders of 67 with Jerusalem as its capital, and the right of refugees to return. The difficulty that I have when it comes to financial resources, when it comes to political impasse, when it comes to all of this, is really compensated by the solid, steady fastness of the Palestinian people. Mohamed Shtaye, thank you very much uh, for coming on the Friends 24 interview. And thank you for watching this interview from Ramal.